Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today we're going to take a look at the new loudness meter plugin that comes with the 10.2.3 update in Logic Pro 10. We'll also take a look at the difference between metering RMS levels versus LUFS levels, as well as the history of LUFS metering. I apologize in advance for the lengthy introduction for this video, but the truth is that the loudness meter is very simple to use and it doesn't really require a full tutorial to use at all. However, understanding why it's being used and what reference values to follow is really what's most important here. So I have a bit of background information to give you before we get started using it. Up until the 10.2.3 update, Logic has lacked a dedicated loudness meter, which is helpful for setting reference levels for mastering music, as well as used to normalize audio levels for TV broadcasting. This helps so that levels overall are, are at or near an industry standard, not too quiet, not too loud. The units used in the loudness meter are LUFS units. LUFS stands for loudness units, reference to full scale. Sort of like digital metering is in dBFS. FS stands for full scale, meaning that zero dB is the peak value you can have in the digital recording before clipping. LUFS is based on the dBFS system as well. So one LU is equal to one dB. LUFS is also known as LKFS for its K weighting scale. And and was introduced in 2010 by the EBU, that's the European Broadcasting Union. This was first introduced in the EBU R128 standard. Also in 2011-2012, the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, introduced two revisions for LKFS, and there's been several other revisions as well. But what I want you to understand is that for all intents and purposes, LUFS and LKFS are identical. The main reason for the EBU and ITU standards for loudness were because the sound levels of TV commercials were way too loud compared to the shows they were being broadcast with. The standard as of today is negative 23 dB for TV and broadcasting with a loose standard of negative 16 dB for music. In previous videos, I've shown examples using the level meter or the multimeter monitoring RMS levels, mastering to around negative 10 or negative 12 dB RMS. RMS metering is a good way to approximate loudness, but the loudness meter shows us LUFS units, which is weighted different and is a better judge of loudness than using RMS. So getting back to why I often use negative 10, we can still use negative 10 as a reference with the loudness meter, uh, as I have in past videos, uh, but keep in mind that the negative 16 reference I, I mentioned earlier is really just a suggestion for music and is quite quiet compared to most popular recordings in the market. So part of it's just personal taste, the artist's taste and clarity, which I think is the most important detail. If you can master a really loud recording but still maintain clarity and dynamics, great, go for it. Once clarity starts to be lost, I typically fall back to a more conservative mastering level. The main thing to remember from all of this is that yes, RMS levels are a good judge of loudness. There's nothing wrong with using RMS metering for mastering music. LUFS levels are weighted differently and are just a better judge of overall loudness. So now we have all the background information out of the way, let's use the plugin. All right, so let's get into using the uh, loudness meter. Um, what I'm going to do with the loudness meter is I'm going to use it to match the loudness levels of two different tracks by the same band that are going on the same album. And I want to match their loudness levels so that when one song plays right next to another, that they all have the approx approximately the same amount of loudness um, or perceived loudness. So I'm going to load my loudness meter on the master fader, the, ma the stereo output. Um, I'll just unload it here. Just go to your inserts and it's under metering loudness meter. Pull that up. Um, and there's actually three different uh, meters in the loudness meter. Let me just uh, hit start here to start metering and I'm gonna hit play just to get a little snippet of the song. So you can see there's, well, you, could, you can't, could see there that there was uh, three different meters. Um, you have one that's labeled M, S, and I. M is momentary loudness. Uh, S is short-term loudness and I is integrated loudness level. Um, most of the time, overall, we're going to be looking at the integrated level. That's sort of like our long-term loudness level. Um, typically, what you do is either listen to the entire track and get the entire integrated loudness level, or you listen to like at least like a 60 second clip um, and get an integrated loudness level. Um, sometimes you can do even less than that just for quick metering. You can you can, you know, play like 20 or 30 seconds uh, of the track and get a, an approximated uh, integrated loudness level. Momentary is like your 
instantaneous loudness level at that point in time. Short term is, uh, is still sort of almost instantaneous, but a, a little wider, a uh, little wider window um, for metering. Um, also, there is this little um, little yellow slider here. This is your target loudness level. So this is just just basically a reference for you as to where you're metering for. So for mastering music, I'd probably set this somewhere between negative 10 and negative 16. If I was doing like dialogue um, for TV, I'd probably do something like negative 23 or negative 24. So I'm gonna set this at negative 10 and any values that go above negative 10 are gonna show up in yellow. which right now nothing is showing up in yellow because our track is very quiet. Uh, it's been fully mixed, but it has not been mastered. Um, rather than adding a bunch of mastering effects here just for demonstration, I'm just gonna use a mastering limiter. Um, you could use Logic's uh, stock limiter, but I'm gonna use my, um, um, my Fab Filter Pro L. So I'm gonna pull that up. And you'll see as I add gain in the limiter, um, I'm gonna put this in the transparent mode. As I get add gain in the limiter, you'll see the uh, the LUFS integrated level go up, or it, uh, yeah, it goes up um, closer to zero dB. Um, it's never going to get there. We really want it to be more like negative 10 dB, um, so we don't want it, you know that loud. We want to make it too loud. Um, so this is similar to what I've talked about in previous videos, using an RMS level to to meter. It's essentially the same thing as using RMS levels to meter. It's just the weighting of LUFS is better for approximating loudness than RMS actually is. So I'm just going to play the track. I'm going to reset. Um, I'm going to play the track and I'm just going to pull the gain up and we'll uh, see where the integrated level gets to about negative 10. So we're coming in a little loud actually, so we'll pull the gain down a bit, reset it, hit play again. There we go. So you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making an adjustment over here that I'm just hitting reset because if I don't hit reset, it's still taking into account the previous setting. So if I was too loud, it's still going to be the meter still going to show as too loud. So I just keep hitting re uh, reset. Now, the, the last um, meter that's shown here is the LU range, the loudness range. Um, this value is basically useless unless you play the track for a longer period of time, like usually at least 40 or 50 or 60 seconds. Um, the R128 uh, documentation even specifies that, that this value is not really, you can't really take it, um, you can't really take it seriously unless you let it play for 60 seconds. So what the, what the loudness range is, is it quantifies a variation in time varying loudness. So basically it's the variation in loudness that we have. So a smaller number means that we have less loudness variation and a larger number means we have more loudness variation. So a softer song that maybe an acoustic song is gonna have a little bit more, uh, more ups and more downs, more dynamics. A rock song like this is gonna have quite a bit less uh, dynamics. Pop music and electronic music sometimes even less dynamics there as well, at least when it comes to volume um, dynamics. So really to get a good LU range approximation, um, we have to let the track play for at least 40 or 50 seconds. Um, the, the, R, the R128 specification uh, recommends 60 seconds. So I'm gonna play this whole little clip here with our new uh, gain setting in the Pro-L and uh, we'll see what our LU range ends up being. It's gonna be something drastically different than eight. Yeah, so we've got a loudness range of about one LU, which is what I expected. It's heavily compressed, loud rock music. 
Um, so I wasn't expecting a lot of dynamic range. So let's um, um, let's check out our other track. Now I'm going to put a different limiter on my other track, and we'll match the loudness of the first track or the second track to the first one. So let me just throw the uh, Pro L back on here. I'm going to select a range to meter as well. I'm sort of skipping the intro of the song because there's a lot of like little dips and things like that. I just want to get to like the loud part of the song really. Um, let's reset the meter. Let's mute the first track, unmute the second track, and I'll hit play and I'll keep resetting and keep bumping up the gain. Let me put myself in transparent mode here and we'll give this a listen. There we go, we got our integrated loudness so right, right around negative 10. Let me just bump this up one more tenth of a dB there. And then um, let's uh, get a full uh, LU range measurement as well. So yeah, this one's got a little bit higher uh, LU range, just a slightly, slightly higher because there's like those little breaks, I think, in between the guitar riff. And I think that's causing like a dynamic um, shift. I am going to pull the gain up like one more tenth of a, a dB here. And then, of course, the last thing here is just to trust your ears, you know, listen to one track and then listen to the other track and see if they sound good uh, back to back. So let's just AB them real quick. Yeah, so the only thing that's really different now, uh, the volume level is the same, the loudness is the same, but the um, maybe there's some tonal differences. So that would be another another issue outside of loudness uh, that we may have to to tackle in mastering. Maybe shifting some of the frequencies a bit with uh, a sonic enhancer like Vitamin or just an EQ, just to sort of like. Uh, shape the tone a little bit different from one track to the next to, to match their tones a little bit differently but that's that's a whole other that's a whole other process a whole other topic so uh, one last thing you can do with the uh, the loudness meter is you can click up here by default it's in uh, vertical mode and you can click up here and put it in horizontal mode so if you want to view it horizontally you can do that as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial on the new loudness meter in Logic 10.2.3, as well as an overview on LUFS metering. Again, it's a more accurate, better weighted way to approximate loudness over using RMS levels. And I'm happy that Logic finally added a dedicated loudness meter. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out carneymediagroup.com where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.